From Chicago's Can TV, this is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi there. Welcome once again to Chicago Newsroom here on Can TV. I'm Ken Davis. We sit around and we talk about the things that are important to Chicago. So, hey, let's talk about the L, shall we? The L. Ridership's going down after years of really pretty spectacular growth, and there's a lot of speculation about why. The service isn't really getting all that much better, and if anything, the crowds are making it slower. Uber and Lyft seem to be offering a serious alternative for lots and lots of people, and millions, maybe billions of dollars are being poured into the system, or at least in the planning stages for the system. All projects to make the L experience faster and maybe even more pleasant. But here's the question, is it a little, is it, you know, like too little, too late? Every generation or so, every generation, we have this discussion, this existential discussion about public transit. Is it dead? Have new technologies like, you know, cars, maybe the interstate highway system, have they made it irrelevant? Won't we all be working from home and not in office buildings downtown anyway? Won't the jobs be in the suburbs where everybody will be living so we can basically bulldoze everything east of Harlem Avenue? We don't need that anymore, that city. Well, we seem to be on the verge of another one of those. Can bikes and ride shares provide a better experience than sitting crammed into a slow moving train or a bus? Before we go too far down that road, we're going to mount a strong defense for public transit today, because you know that's what we do here. And to help, the best guy of all, Ed Zotti, is here. Ken, Hi. glad to be here. Good to see you. Ed, uh, you probably know from the reader, um, his boss has been keeping him at work over at the Straight Dope for... Cecil Adams. Cecil Adams. World's smartest human being. He is the world's smartest human being, and, and he must be because he keeps you, he's kept you on all these years. <laughs> I, I make him look good. Yeah, and what do. can I tell you? You do, that's true. <laughs> and, and when, when he makes a fool of himself, you're there to pick up the pieces. He never does. I make a fool of myself. That's, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yes, that's right. He's never wrong. And uh, Ed also works for the Chicago Central Area Committee and uh, has done some, I think, really exemplary work looking at transit policy in Chicago and where we should go and what we should do. So it seemed like it would be the perfect moment to have Ed come and sit down with us since this is the day after we just got all of these four proposals in from the different companies for how they're going to build a whatever you want to call it, an express train, a bullet train, or a, a, an electric module of some kind that's going to whip us from downtown to O'Hare. Well, not exactly whip us. It's going to be in 20 minutes. So, <laughs> Well, which is twice as fast as you can get there now yeah, yeah, on the blue line. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah I, I have some knowledge of the process. I'll bet you do. Uh, I think it will be very interesting to see what exactly has been proposed. I think there's going to be quite the gamut. Anything that Elon Musk is involved yeah. in, you you know, is going to be pretty out there. Right. I, I should say we're 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 recording this the day after Elon Musk was able to return phase one and phase two three parts of his out of boost, three booster of rocket. his rocket. Right, right. The third didn't make it. Yeah. In transit, but that's that... not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, anyway, he was able to return 66.6 percent .6 of his booster rocket, but that I that that image of the two of them kind of you know synchronized and very cool, down on very the cool, very cool. But as you can see from the casualty rate, an unproven technology. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that if the city goes forward with this, and I think there is a real possibility they will. You do, okay. Uh, it's gonna be a proven technology. It's gonna mm -hmm. be conventional. It may be cool conventional rail, Yeah. but I think it's, you know. Yeah, the idea of building some kind of an evacuated electrical tube with modules in it, and they, cl they clamp have, you into this module and yeah, shoot you at 600 I've, I've miles. I've spoken with people Everybody says this is a really smart guy. He yeah, invented yeah. rockets. This is yeah. no dope. But this is at best 20 years down the road. Yeah. And, uh, and as you say, it's, uh, I'm not sure that even I would want to be in one of those first. Uh, I would not want to be the first guy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Especially given the 66.6%. You know, so, yeah, it would, it would be a little dangerous. But no, what you just said is something really profound and important. You think the city is going to go ahead with this if they can? I think they will. I think the chances of it making it work on multiple levels are better than people think. Uh, I, and I don't want to put money on it, but I think, there, uh, I think it 
can go ahead as the city execs, expects in the sense that, number one, it'll get you down fast. Number two, the fare won't be crazy. And number three, it can get done in some reasonable period of time. And number four, most important of all, it won't cost the city any money. Do you really believe that? I think it's possible. Ed, you've been around a long time. I can't I believe I'm not, hearing you say this. I have, I have some knowledge of the process. I know you That's do. That's all I'm going to tell I you. I respect your knowledge. The, I'm not saying for sure. I'm not a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible. We shall see. This will be a very interesting year. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm inventorying in my head the number of times I've heard city officials say, this will cost the taxpayers nothing. And your skepticism <laughs> is well founded. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that the argument that I've heard, and it's a valid one, this is a distract, even if it works as the city wants it to work, mm -hmm. it's a distraction from other things. Well, there's that too, yeah. And I, yeah. But I think that's a point worth addressing, because mm -hmm. I think if, if this were to go forward, and big if, no question, it would, it's not going to be something that you and I and the average Chicagoan is going to take too long. This is going to be a premium service that yeah, business yeah. people and tourists with a couple bucks. But it will break the log jam, I think, if it goes forward. Because once you put in this major piece of infrastructure, mm -hmm. you suddenly have to think what goes in at either end? How does it connect to everything else we've got? Sure. And a bunch of stuff that people have been talking about that I personally have been talking about for quite a number of years. Suddenly you start to think, how are we going to make it all fit together? Now is the opportunity. You're going to make major investments. You've got to spend, do some major rearrangements of things. If you're going to do anything ever, now is that time. So <clears throat> if you don't believe, and I, I think I'm hearing you say, that uh, the boring company, uh, Ellen Musk. I am deeply skeptical. They're, they're not going to be able to build a... I, have, I assume a twin tube underground. I mean, Un, you know, this would underground. Be, I mean, there's physics involved. Yeah, you have yeah. to move dirt, and right. there's, there's no way you can get around that kind yeah. of stuff. They have. They're going to make thinner tubes, yada yada. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, unless they have it done by robots or something mm -hmm. like that, which could happen. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but not now. I mean, yeah. they've got about a hundred foot, hundred yards of tunnel dug in California, and that's it. That's you can't predicate it. a whole yeah. service yeah. in a short period of time on that kind of research. So if we don't go that route, then we're talking about some weird combination of overhead, I don't know, bridges and... It's, it's not that complicated. And I just, just look at what's been released so far. There's four bidders so far. Mm -hmm. One of those is a Spanish infrastructure company teamed up with Amtrak. Mm -hmm. Amtrak operates railroads all the time. Right. They're, they have a, they have, there's space in, there's slots anyway. Actually, space is a different consideration. It's very congested in there. But they operate trains out of Union Station. There's mm -hmm. a, a, a you know, rail line that runs past O'Hare. So it's not in principle that complicated to get them from point A to point B. Can you do it in 20 minutes? Can you do it in, you know, are there a lot of great crossings? I don't know. But, I mean, it's not a crazy thing to ask for. It's They're not, not going to have to deal tunnel. with freight train interference. Well, they, that's, the that, that, that is a problem. That is a problem. Yeah. And there, so they get have you to O'Hare in 20 minutes, unless there's a freight train, then it'll be an hour and a quarter. Well, they've got to solve that problem. Yeah. <laughs> and some of the rights away, right of ways are, some of the tracks mm -hmm. are, more, are more heavily used for freight than others. So yeah. there's a lot of logistical problems. Is it solvable? Yeah, I think so. Can they make money at it? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not yeah. the money guy, yeah. But, yeah. but it's physically doable. I mean, that's, we're, we're in very fortunate in Chicago. We have all right. this rail right away all over mm -hmm. the place, mm -hmm. some of which is in active use and some of which is not. And yeah. it goes places that are very useful to go to. So we, I right. think it's doable. I think we'll see what all four of these things are. I'm sure Elon's going to be good for entertainment value, if nothing else. <laughs> uh, but I think, I'm not sure... Some of the things, just looking at who they've got lined up to be partners would suggest that some of these things are well, well more thought out than others. Well, I'll give you that because I, that was my reaction this morning when I saw the, uh, when I saw the four companies that, that bid. It's like, Which is surprising by itself. It is. It is. And they're rather sober companies. You know, Kiwit or however you pronounce it, they're, they're the ones who've, who've built pretty much most of the CTA infrastructure in the last few years. They, they replaced all the track on the blue line. I mean, mm -hmm. literally from O'Hare down to Grand Avenue or wherever. So they, these are not folks who don't know how to do the work. Right. And they must they must have some sense that it could work. So there, there may be something there. But, okay, so the, what about just the sort of the social argument that, uh, you know, I mean, 
I've, I've always rejected the, we can't send men to the moon as long as someone is starving in the streets somewhere on earth. I don't buy that argument at all. But a slightly less crazy argument would be, why would we even want to be building this kind of infrastructure when we've talked for 30 years about extending the red line to 130th Street? Just something simple well, like that. If, if why the, don't we get if Elon the Musk to build is, that? We've got a fixed pool of money and we can do one thing or the other, mm -hmm. no question. The argument here, that will, and it remains to be seen if it's a valid argument, is that this is an independent funding source that mm -hmm. isn't available for other purposes. Right. And if we can get it done on the premise that the city has put forward, namely mm -hmm. it's not going to cost us a dime, and it will make Chicago more accessible to business travelers and therefore a better place to do business, why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the argument that the city has, and it makes some sense if you accept all the premises, which again yeah. remains yeah. to be seen. But if the downtown, we have the fastest growing downtown in the country, I don't want to sound like the city administration here, mm -hmm. but it's true. We have, in terms of population, we're at record highs in terms of employment. The, the, the downtown Chicago, the, cent, the core, you know, the central area, mm -hmm accounts for more than half of jobs in the city of Chicago. The first time probably in the history of the city it's ever been the case. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's working. Uh, if you, and you want to play to that, and it's the downtown jobs. I mean, there's people who make a lot of money, but there's all sorts of ancillary, you know, service positions. You go to Starbucks and it's all run by people of color, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of jobs for a lot of people at a whole range of income and skill levels. So. Mm -hmm. The fact that downtown Chicago becomes more viable as a business center is a good thing for a lot of people. And even if you yourself never in a million years would pay 30 or 25 bucks or whatever it is to ride a train, the fact that it's there and other people do is a good thing for you, potentially. Okay. I mean, I, I actually could see that if you're, if, you know, some executive type is getting off a plane at O'Hare and sees that for 20 minutes, in, in 20 minutes for 30 bucks, he can be in the loop. He or she is going to do that. I'm not so sure about going the other way, but maybe, maybe there's enough. I, you know, I've you know, been. You've been to London, right there, London the Heathrow Express. Uh, I, I've been there, but not ridden it. No. I, I went out there to. I had a kid, but out there for school. But I took the Heathrow Express out, and it's wonderful service. It's like it's whatever it is, 25 pounds back mm -hmm. in the day, and took the the Piccadilly, the, the two back. The Piccadilly two, yeah. They both get you there. One's a lot more. It's one is it's. Pretty much, it's even a blue line, the mm -hmm. Piccadilly line, mm -hmm. and it gets you there, and it's slow, and it, but you know, it's re reasonably yeah. reliable. Yeah. Th there's they serve two different markets; they do do different things. If you are coming into town and you're from flying in from wherever, and yeah. in London is the classic business center, one you're of the world. You're here for a day for a business. Yeah, meeting. you you got you have no time to spare. You right. get downtown, you're at you know at Paddington Station. You mm -hmm. can take the, the taxi or the tube, whatever you want to do. Yeah. You're there. It's a different market. It's not serving the same market as the blue line in there or yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And so what? The fact of it is that the blue line, even on the most practical level, the blue line here in Chicago will eventually fill up. It's already pretty crowded. Uh, it, right now it seems like, oh, we're stealing the, the traffic out of O'Hare. There is still going to be a lot of people who think five bucks is plenty to be paying, maybe mm -hmm. too much. They're not going to want to take spend the 30 bucks. The, the blue line as a whole, the ridership has been going up dramatically. Mm -hmm. There are limits to what it can carry. We're not going to get to them real soon, but we will get to them eventually, probably within 20 years. And then you either have to like extend the platforms to go 10 car trains, and that's a multi-billion dollar project. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it makes some sense for a lot of people. When you say capacity, you mean that the, the, there wouldn't be a capacity to run more eight car trains? There's, there are tr physical limits to the tracks. Yeah, yeah. You can run 26, 28 trains per hour. Mm -hmm. They're at about 22. You know, oh, is and, that right? Yeah, and they, they're do, there's different, there's a, I don't want to get too much yeah, into yeah. the weeds here, yeah. but there's a lot of things you can do to sort of make the most of what you got. But eventually, they're going to fill it up. I mean, this happens in all, major cities around the world, New York, mm -hmm. London, you name it. Mm -hmm. they, you get to a certain point there's and you're just, just, no you're just, more. You're just yeah. full. Yeah. And you can, you can signals and all kinds of crazy mm -hmm. things, and they're all expensive. But you eventually, tweak it you get, a few seconds here and yeah, there. Yeah, 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 I mean, there's yeah, a really, yeah. a, seriously, a ton of things you can do. But eventually, you run through all those things, mm -hmm. and you got what you got. Yeah. So. One of the main reasons I wanted to bring you here was because I saw your name the other day um, in in Cranes. Greg Hines raised your name when he was talking about the Uber effect and the fact that the uh, 
uh, ride sharing seems to be a major culprit in the loss of ridership in the CTA. Um, buses are down a lot, but now for the first time we're seeing rail down. Too. Rail was dropped off a lot. Mm -hmm. I have wrote, have written extensively about this. Between 1992, which was the low point, and 2015, rail rose, rose virtually every year. Yeah. Uh, bus has been up and down. Bus, let me be frank, is in long-term decline. Mm -hmm. I mean, 50 years ago, it was 600 million rides a day. Now it's down. It's heading down to 200 million. Yeah. And I think that's true in that's all true cities because nationwide. of traffic. I that's mean, it's true just, nationwide. Yeah. 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 It's, rail, however, has been going the opposite direction mm -hmm. for the obvious reason that if it's great separated rail, and that's the big key, mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's on the street like light yeah, rail to lines yeah. tend to be, you have the same, you have the worst of both worlds. Yeah. But if you are immune to the problems of traffic congestion and you can run, and you have obviously have some delays from time to time, but if you can carry large volumes of people despite the fact that you've got street congestion, that's the reason for people to ride your service. Mm -hmm. And that's what's propelled the growth of the rail service in Chicago for more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it, it, goed, it went up, what, what my research uh, established was that it went up in lockstep with services employment in the core. When I say services, I single that out from there's manufacturing mm -hmm. or there was at mm -hmm. one time and, all, and railroad workers and all kinds of stuff. And so the total number was about flat for many years. As the manufacturing went down, services employment, which is really a proxy for professional employment, mm -hmm. that went up. They tended to cancel out. Their process came to its conclusion in 2010 from what my research established. Mm -hmm. Since then, employment in general has gone up and it's gone up for seven years running, the first time in the history of modern record keeping. So I think it's pretty safe to say that as downtown employment goes up, rail ridership goes up, because it's the easiest way to get downtown. Mm -hmm. 2015, that very clear-cut process came to a halt. Employment continued to go up, but total rail ridership went down. What clearly was happening, in my opinion, was the Uber effect. There were other things that worked. Gas prices were hit historically low levels, but that process—that was what CTA said. They, that, that's they, one yeah. of one of yeah. many things. But that process—that's been—they bottomed out in 20, 2016, and it's been slightly up. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gone down, but ridership has continued to go down. Mm -hmm. The only other explanation on offer is the Uber effect. Mm -hmm. Now, the, if I if you look at there's a lot of number sources here. The one of the number sources it's a little slow, but the the um, the census conducts annual surveys, the American Community Survey. As of 2016, latest year available, the number of people who take the L downtown has continued to rise and rose in 2016. We'll see what happens in 2017. But the people who take the journey to work on the L continues to rise at a steady pace as one would expect given the fact that downtown employment continues to go up. As the, what is probably happening is that non-work trips are in decline. So that's what we're seeing then. The, if you're, if you live in Lakeview or you know you live south and and you want to get downtown, the red line is going to get you there as quickly and efficiently as anything probably can. Right. But if it's Friday night and you're going out to a bar or something, exactly. And just from anecdotally, I mean, you, the one we there's the CTA publishes our trips that I haven't done a point request frankly mm -hmm. to get, mm -hmm. but. Anecdotally, they, they, they will tell you that evening traffic seems to be off. Weekend traffic, which is counted separately, obviously, is way off. Mm. You know, as wow. much as 20% on some lines. Wow. So clearly, and you have to, what else can you attribute that to other than the Uber effect? Yeah. So the, the dilemma that the CTA faces is you have to build the system to accommodate the peak ridership, which yeah. occurs during rush yeah. hours. Yeah. That is not going to go away. I mean, there are some people, don't get me wrong, who take Uber. I know some people myself who take Uber or Uber Pool or something to work. Yeah. But anytime you've got, you're dealing with who, however you get there, whether it's taxi cab, your private car, autos, robot cars, whatever else, they're all operating on the same amount of fixed street surface. When that fills up, it's going to slow things down for everybody. Independent, great separated rail. I think that happened in about 1957, didn't it? The, the well, streets filled up. Well, but, but in all seriousness, the amount, it, it has in general, but if you look at the traffic counts, the vehicular counts, they've been continuing to go steadily up. And it's, if you ever have to, and the, and the length of the time that it's congested, I mean, anybody in Chicago who's lived there in their, their whole adult lives knows how l much longer the, the rush hour used to be. It used to be like a, 
it's half an hour, hour. Now it's like three hours. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime between three and seven. Yeah. So it's just getting physically difficult to fit any more vehicles on the roads. The in Uber is subject to the same capacity constraints as every other kind of vehicle on mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. So is it going to have some impact? I mean, it's a very complicated subject, and I can't begin to any, you know, explore it, even understand the whole thing myself. Right. And we will have to see. It depends a lot on personal habits and th that are still in the formation stage. But it seems unlikely that the core, you, your bread and butter ridership in transit is your work trips. Yeah. That comes for two-thirds of your ridership. The, the stuff that gets nibbled away at, and you can see why. I mean, you go to the bar or something like that. I don't, not that I do much bar hopping these <laughs> days, but when I go out with my kids, you get out and you want to go some other place, you do it with Uber. You don't mm -hmm. get on the train. I mean, yeah. that's, just, that's just the way it works. So, and it can get you safely home. It can get you All safely home. All the way to home. your door. Yes, it can. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's for if, you've, if you're not going long distances, you live downtown, it's the, the money is even money. It's a much. little bit off, off subject, but I, I would imagine that a similar thing is going on with, with people who drive to work. Um, I mean, there's the, the cost of parking downtown is enormous. So if you could, if you're willing to sit on the expressway for an hour while you're doing all your work instead of driving, Uber becomes a really valuable uh, It does. Alternate. I mean, the, the impact of, I mean, never mind Uber, but and all these you know, self-driving cars, all these mm -hmm. technologies, right. which, you know, not to get too much off on a tangent here, yeah. will well, happen. This, we're all about tangents. We are, but it, it'll happen. It's not going to happen as soon as some people yeah. think. Yeah. But <coughs> within my lifetime, I, I think, I suspect, it will happen. Mm -hmm. And when it does, it's going to have a huge impact on a whole bunch of things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Parking structures. Yeah. I mean, I was at a fascinating seminar about a year ago talking about what people plan to build now versus what, like a parking structure. You build a big commercial complex, you've got to have a huge amount of parking structure. Right. They're telling, the architects now are telling people, don't figure out a way to reuse this space. To make the space so it can be reused, exactly. repurposed. Because you're not going to need anywhere yeah. near this much yeah. space for parking. Fascinating story. So don't, don't build structures with all these uh, sloped s floors. If Precisely. You can, if you can it, build it, them so absolutely. the floors are level absolutely. and put don't, elevators And don't have shallow spaces. Yeah, have yeah, enough, yeah. Have yeah. enough depth that you can yeah. put air conditioning yeah, ducts yeah, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Interesting. In Very interesting. The t story I, I, have been, I heard at this particular seminar was Google has their big new complex they moved into at whatever it is, Fulton and Morgan. Mm -hmm. uh, they originally were, they had a take, contracted for, I don't know what it was, hundreds of spaces. I think it was 400 spaces, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, developer had another, the McDonald's people come in, they wanted a big parking mm -hmm. facility next to their building and then they didn't have any room to put it. And, Developer came back to Google and said, uh, "Do you guys want to give up some of your parking?" Now the average company would have said, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> yeah, right. Google, being Google, yeah. said, "Well, let's survey our employees and yeah, see what yeah. they said." So they let's did research that. It. Yeah. They did that, and they came back and said, "You can have all the parking." They took I don't some in the single oh. digits. I don't know, but less than 100 spaces. Because the Google employees evidently are either going to take the train, or they're going to walk, or they're going to bike. Live, they live or they nearby. live. They can, right. yeah, they, right. they can walk. Right. Yeah. So that is, I think, a, a, an indication of the shape of things to come. Yeah. Well, you know, I mentioned as you, as we were introducing you that this issue about the relevance of public transportation has existed since the first, you know, horse-drawn trolleys on rails right downtown. It, there's always this discussion about, well, we just aren't going to need it anymore. And, and I can really feel that kind of coming up again now. It's like, you know, it, that's like, you know, we've got everything is online. We don't need to give <laughs> cities anymore. We can right. all live in huts in the woods. Right. Ain't right. going to happen. <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta have a notion yeah. of yeah. It's, it's there's a big difference between what people what's possible and what people act, how they actually want to live. I, I've m mentioned this before, but back uh, in my radio days, I did an interview with a guy who wrote a book called, um, I just had it in my head and I forgot what it was now, oh, Edge City. And it was, it was, it was the book of the decade it, because it was, it clearly laid out what urban planning is gonna be was like. Was that Joel Katkin, something like that? Something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. And, and he actually was happy to be here talking to us here because one of the um, one of the sort of 
oh, I don't know, best examples in the country was right here in Chicago, that Schomburg was becoming the center of this urban area. But it did and, not. And that it in 20 years, in 20 years, everything that's happening will be around Schomburg and maybe Oak Brook. But that did not come to pass. And everything else will be irrelevant. That did not come to pass. And, and that's just in 20 years. No. Yeah, but I mean, did, how quickly, how quickly we go through around these modes. Right, 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 right. Chicago and New York are mm -hmm. the two metropolitan areas in the U.S. where the majority of office construction is downtown. Yeah, yeah. Now, play, you go to, go to uh, Atlanta, for example, mm -hmm. edge cities are all over the place. Yeah. Buckhead, which is yeah. a very yeah, fancy, yeah, yeah, high yeah, yeah. rent mm -hmm. area, is on the fringe. L.A. has got downtowns all over the place. Yeah. Well, it, it always was a bunch of downtowns. Right, LA. and now it's even more yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Century City and yeah. everything else. Uh, Chicago is in a unique position to benefit be from, I mean, there's no question that the trend worldwide is to very dense, mm -hmm. lively city centers. Right, and, right. and you can look at the cities that have done well in this country. Mm -hmm. Setting aside Chicago, New York, Boston, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, yada, yada, yada. Downtown is a place where people want to be. And what do they have in common? They, they have transit systems that have, have always worked. They have to some degree. To or some degree, right, I right. mean, there you can go to New York and they'll in Boston and they'll complain. And Washington, and right. you name the town. Right. I've been up in a whole bunch yeah. of them, and they all complain about the transit system, right. as we do here. As we do here. But the but fact they is have that them, they have them, and they've had them for a while. Right. And the city is built up around that, right. and that gives them their strength. Right. And that is now the way the world is going. Is it going to go there for our next thousand years? Who knows? No. But it's going there now. Well, and that that brings us to transit-oriented development, which is mm -hmm. another huge hot spot in Chicago. I mean. Who ever, again, two older gentlemen who've been around for a long time, if I had told you that Milwaukee in California was going to become a hot spot in Chicago, you, you, I mean, you would say, well, why? There's no reason. But why is because of that blue line. The blue line is and the armature for an immense the amount is the of development. The blue line in Chicago. What's the, going the on? The highway. The highway. <laughs> right. When, again, I go back, I, there's the story that the real estate guys tell you is that this guy's talking to some individual that wants to develop a structure, and the guy says, I want to be near the highway. Mm -hmm. And the real estate guy assumes he means <laughs> the, the interstate highway <laughs> right. system. Yeah. No, 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 no. The hipster <laughs> highway <laughs> that kids ride their bikes right. down to get to work. Good old Milwaukee Avenue yeah. or Elston or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we had you on the show, I think I looked it up, it was about three years ago, two and a half or three years ago. In 2011, you wrote the definitive manifesto, it was called How to Fix the L. And it was all about the red-purple conglomerate and the brown line and all of that. Right. And I, I loved it. I thought it was just one of the great pieces of literature of, of, of my <laughs> lifetime. You're very kind. I, I, well, it, I, it's just because, you know, I happen to ag agree with what you were saying, and, and, and I love the L. I, you know, when I was 14, I lived in a different era, of course, when kids could just run by themselves. And I would—I lived out in Humboldt Park, and I was on that Northwest L all the time. I'd go up to—I'd go up to, um, you know, uh, well, whatever, just just grab it and go downtown, you know. And I've always loved it. And anyway, you wrote this thing about how to fix the North, the, the spine, if you want to call it, what became the Red Line. And I went back this morning and reread the entire manifesto, and I'm amazed at how much of what you were talking about has actually come to pass. I, I really hadn't quite noticed that a lot of it is I, happening. I don't want to take too much credit. Oh, I'm not, I'm not giving you credit. I'm just saying it, it, it's what well, we're talking I think, about. I think everybody, I put into focus a, a things that a lot of people thought. Yeah, I didn't invent anything. I didn't really come up with any any new concepts, right. but it, I put it all down on paper. But what amazes me, forgive me for saying this, is less the fact that you that you wrote it, but the fact that all of these things have fallen in place that have made it imperative that some of these things had to be addressed, which we hadn't been addressing for right. 30, 40 years. Right. Things like, for example, how do you how do you deal with the brown lane trains that Here's, you know, here's the north-south, and here's the brown line, and every time a brown line train goes north and crosses over, everything from the north has to stop while that train crosses. An interesting thing about that, you said one of the things to, to handle this is to do like you do in expressways, you just build a ramp over it, right? Right. Well, that became very controversial, and one of your colleagues at the Reader, uh, Mr. Jarovsky, right. who we've had on the show, and we've argued about this endlessly, 
uh, did this thing about, oh yeah, right, we're going to spend you know, $300 to million save dollars to seconds. save 15 seconds. This, the, that was, it was poorly presented. Yes, it, it was. It was not about the saving mayor 15 seconds. The mayor misspoke when he said it that. It was about trying to add to capacity. Right, right. And that's pivotal. Yeah, and you're so right, and he and the others are so wrong about this, because every time you save that 15 seconds, you're allowing another train or two or three or five to be on that north leg. Exactly. And that is critical because you can put 600 people on an eight-car eight it, car train. Exactly. It, it delay, well, 800 if you really cram in there, but yeah, it, it, del right. it delays the day when they're going to have to go to 10-car trains, which will be a fabulously expensive project. Yeah, well, think about how much they spent expanding the brown line to eight car when it was only six cars. That was only a few years ago. And that was a much simpler proposition because the yeah. system as a whole is set up for eight cars, right. which, which it's not for 10. Right. So right. there's a, but it will, I know it's a little painful, but really in the fullness, you know, in, when all is said and done, it's, it's what they had to do. They really had no choice. Now, there was other things I wish they had done that they didn't do, which is have a little layup spot so you could turn trains back and all kinds of stuff. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds there, but they did what they had to do. I love it out here in the weeds. Yeah, yeah. but I, yeah. I think it's a great thing, and it's really it's one of the big, it was the biggest knot in the system, mm -hmm. and they're finally getting that taken care of. The additional problem that is still is still there and has yet to be solved, but I think there you're going to see, I think this is going to be a very eventful year in that respect, is distribution downtown. Mm -hmm. We have a system that has worked well for whatever it's been, 125, 130 years, but it's a hub and spoke system. It gets you to downtown Chicago, very small area, 30, you know, the original mm -hmm. loop, 35 square blocks. Yeah. The, as you know, the central area has expanded well beyond in all directions. There are places you can get downtown easy to get to places on the perimeter which used to be either nothing or Warshawski's or whatever the heck it was, <laughs> yeah. are, are now very difficult to get to. Even places that are built up, like if you go to Streeterville, good luck trying to get there on Metro. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. but what are you going to do? Take their buses slow yeah. and taxis yeah. and all the rest of it? So there's a lot of things that need to be done. And one of the things that I proposed, worked on uh, over a period of years, was a way to, dis to uh, you know, distribute riders within the downtown core other than the loop proper, mm -hmm. you know, in the, on the perimeter of the loop. Mm -hmm. And there have, this is a problem that's been understood. Again, nothing, I had no original insight here. The problem has been batted around for 50 years. I mean, there was a proposal in the late 60s mm -hmm. for the distributor subway, 1968. Yeah, yeah. They kicked that around under, under the Byrne administration until mm -hmm. 1979. They Jane finally, Byrne killed it. King, right. Jane Byrne finally killed it because mm -hmm. it was, you know. Then there was the circulator light rail system, which mm -hmm. was in the 90s. They, we added that around for seven or eight years, finally, that finally died. And now we proposed, I was with Central Area Committee, we proposed in 2016 something we were calling the connector, which is, I'm, you have to, you know, I'm not trying to try and draw you a picture of where it went, but it was going to serve many of the same areas on the periphery of the, cent of, of the traditional loop. It would connect the rail stations, the metro stations to the CTA, which right now are very poorly connected. Yeah. We are uniquely poor, poorly situated in the world. That's for sure. Stuff. Come in on Amtrak and try to get on the CTA. Right. Good luck, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you go to New York, Washington, Boston, mm -hmm. you, get, you can take the suburban rail system in and there is a station right there. Yeah. And we don't have that. You've got to walk blocks if mm -hmm. you can even find it. So. Uh, so I think those things need to happen. I think, and that's what I think the value of this, this you know, the express to O'Hare will be. Mm -hmm. Once we get that in place, we need to think how it connects. And oh, one of the things we can solve. use it as a trigger to. To get everything else going. Yeah, yeah. So. Ed, we've just blown our entire time. We've got to go. I'm so sorry. So you'll come back again, won't you? I'll come back. I mean, really, I want, I want to just keep this conversation going because this is the one place in Chicago media where you can get in the weeds about transit. And we're going to do it again. Thank you so much. Been a pleasure. Ed Zotti from The Reader and from the Chicago Central Area Committee. I'm Ken Davis. Don't forget, you can watch this show and all the others by going to our address right here where you can watch the videos. And please check out the audio podcast. Go take a walk along the lakefront and listen to us. Or listen to this anyway. Listen to Ed anyway. All right. See you next week with another show. I'm Ken Davis. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.